Alright, this is a teardown review of a unusual looking bulb. It's called the Philips Slim Style. Uh, it's slim style, I guess, because when you look at the side of it, it's quite narrow. But if you look straight down, it kind of looks like a bulb. Uh, so we'll uh, take a long look at uh, the performance of the bulb, and uh, then we'll tear it down. Uh, this is actually a fairly surprising offering from Philips. Okay, so one of the real disappointments of this bulb is it uh, has a very poor light pattern. Uh, on the edge here, I'll just move the bulb uh, back and forth a little bit. You can see in this white piece of paper, you can, there's a, a significant uh, dark band. And if you check other people's uh, reports on the internet, uh, on a lampshade, you can see a dark stripe. So, uh, completely unacceptable. Uh, I can't imagine why anyone, other than maybe utility lighting, would accept uh, having a dark band on their bulb. So, let's just do a polar plot and uh, just confirm this. Okay, uh, let's talk about light intensity as a polar graph. Uh, now you see if I had to resort to a stand here to keep the bulb in the right uh, orientation, um, and then I mapped out the intensity, the uh, bulb probably is actually different uh, depending on its orientation, but when it's in this vertical orientation, uh, you get what looks like a, not a bad pattern. Now the way I'm doing this is not quite sensitive enough to show what it's probably an extremely deep divot here at the very top of the bulb. Uh, which of course is resulting in this uh, really uh, strange dark banding on this bulb. Okay, well let's talk about flicker, the second disappointment of this bulb. The solar cell here of course converting light to electricity and I always nominalize the amount of light falling on the solar cell uh, to give me some sort of sense of as to the flicker the bulb has. Now Philips bulbs uh, until this bulb here actually I've torn down have been absolutely superior uh, in their flicker performance. In fact uh, some of their more modern bulbs are virtually no flicker at all. Huge disappointment here. This is showing 226 millivolts. So uh, here we have a bulb now which not only has a very poor light distribution pattern, uh, it has flicker. Uh, in terms of dimmability, uh, this is a, a dimmer which isn't uh, meant for LED light bulbs or not certified for one. And you can see actually this bulb uh, is actually uh, quite suitably dimmable. Uh, it's not possible, however, to take it down to a really low level. In terms of uh, power consumption, uh, the meter is reading 10.7 watts, the uh, box is 10.5. Uh, power factor, unfortunately, isn't unity, it's uh, only a 0 0.9. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, suitable foreign use and open luminaires only, uh, which obviously means it doesn't work in a uh, fixed luminaire, which obviously is a problem, so that's another point against the bulb. There's lots of bulbs out there now that'll work in enclosed fixtures. The warranty uh, is um, uh, three hours per day for three years, which only works out to 3,200 hours, which is actually one of the worst warranties uh, going, it seems. Uh, there's just not a lot to like about this bulb. Okay, well, perhaps the bulb uh, uses less uh, natural resources, that's why uh, there's an advantage to it, which would result maybe in a lower manufacturing cost. Here's a Philips bulb, um, uh, one we tore down in mid-2013, an excellent bulb from Philips. Low flicker, great light pattern, 130 grams of material. Here's uh, the Slim Style uh, coming in at uh, 63 grams. So, okay, so there's some credits here, maybe there's just simply less material being used to uh, construct this bulb. Okay, well here's the assembly obviously taken out of the uh, plastic enclosure. It looks like that enclosure was uh, sonically welded together. There's a circuit board here and of course the AC-DC converter here. Now, you can see I've ground away a little bit of the circuit board because I was a bit unsure whether it was a, an aluminum-based substrate and uh, it isn't. It's actually a fiberglass one. You can see there's a layer of fiberglass and then the copper. Fairly heavy weight uh, for the actual circuit board material. The uh, converter here, uh, the topology uh, follows a pretty common pattern. Uh, I presume that there's going to be a fuse somewhere here. It looks like a full wave rectifier. Here's a switching MOSFET. Uh, if I turn it over, of course, there's a um, uh, an inductor. Uh, these two components and this component here, the chokes, are basically a uh, an EMI filter, so the noise doesn't get re conducted back into the line. Uh, the controller ICs are exceptionally small. Uh, these little units down here it appears to be. And the smoothing capacitor, uh, regrettably, is only rated to 105 degrees centigrade. So, uh, everything with this bulb says uh, e economy of design. Well, let's tally the score on this one. It's an unusual bulb, certainly. Uh, light distribution patterns, are they good? Well, no, sorry, they're not. 
Uh, does it flicker? Uh, yeah, unfortunately it does. This is the first Philip Boga which has a significant flicker on it, which is a very disappointing uh, development. Uh, does the bulb have good dimmability? Not too bad, actually. I'll give a point here. The dimmability is uh, okay. Uh, it can be used in an enclosed fixture. Well, no, it's pretty clear it can't. And when you look at the components you've chosen, for example, the 105 degree centigrade capacitor, uh, certainly uh, is not uh, not in the direction of uh, high reliability. So we'll uh, uh, take away a point for that as well. Uh, power factor, of course, was reading at uh, 0.9, not unity, so we'll take a, a point away for that. Uh, is it sensitive to natural resources? Well, that's a fair point, actually. There's definitely less energy required to build this bulb, and I think that might speak towards a good thing. We'll give a point to the bulb for that. Uh, but more importantly, I think it's actually a side effect of Philip planning on perhaps a price war. Uh, this bulb here doesn't have a lot of components to it. It looks like, of course, you can pick and place this type of, uh, of assembly very easily uh, with modest amounts of uh, labor, um, which I think would uh, help dramatically when trying to uh, get into a, a price war. Uh, even the semiconductors here look incredibly small, which I'm sure would actually translate into a small die size, which is, of course, an advantage if you're uh, trying to do price war. So, a uh, really interesting development. Uh, obviously, Philips is... Uh, trying all sorts of things out in the market, definitely an innovative vendor, uh, and this is a very unique assembly.